Notice that I kind of stumbled upon this idea of, of me coming and talking to you about a project that I was involved in in the mid-90s um, with Frontier College um, called the Frontier College Youth Service Canada Project. Very uh, creative name. Um, and it involved youth from the Jane Finch, Regent Park, St. Jamestown, and one small community in, the, uh, in Scarborough, in Kennedy Road. Uh, just south of the highway, and they were all in uh, social housing neighborhoods. And the Youth Service Canada project went ran for th I think three years, and we were involved in 95, uh, 96, and 96 and 97. And uh, the aim of the uh, project was uh, it was a national project, and the aim of the project was to um, engage youth who were on social assistance and were out of school. In a in service, community service, and out of that engagement, realign themselves, and and then make their way back into uh, school or business or finish their education or pay off a debt. Uh, they receive stipends. Those who were selected would receive stipends of two hundred dollars a week, and when they finish the project after eight months, they received a voucher for $2,000. That was an important part of that. Our own project was involved in um, recruiting and training and uh, placing uh, uh, two groups of uh, young people, uh, 10 in each group, uh, in these neighborhoods to do literacy work with the children. Uh, in the main and with some adults in some cases to work in local schools. Um, so they were between the ages of 18 and 25 and they were all on social assistance. And they were recruited from the communities itself and our main focus was at the head literacy because we are a literacy organization. Um, in terms of the model itself, uh, after training, they worked in their communities, uh, you know, housing, uh, the Metro Toronto Housing Authority provided some free space uh, through which they could work and uh, have a base and then work in local schools or community centers. They did this for four days a week. On the fifth day, they came to Frontier College and we used the Brandon Room upstairs and it was a day for them to try and begin to put together a portfolio. A portfolio would have, which will have things like a resume, um, a sort of business plan for what they wanted to do when they finished, and a pro and something that we introduced, uh, which was picked up uh, as, a, as something to do nationally, was the idea of uh, of what I call the the uh, the reading project. Each of the participants in the course of eight months had to read 50 books. And I'm going to give you a handout towards the end, which, and which we listed the 50, uh, you know, we listed about 150 books or something like that, and you had the choice of choosing what books you wanted to read. The idea being that if you are a reader, then you can empower yourself to be a lifelong learner. That's a very simple idea, but many young people don't read. And so that idea was picked up, and, and this section that we developed here became part of the manual. The other thing that we focused on was um, the portfolio, which I think some of you are, do, are, are doing. It's an idea that you know um, it's been around for a while, and uh, it's a very holistic way of articulating progress uh, development. And so, um, part of it was to show them how to do a portfolio, what are the elements within it, and so on. And one of the things that we did to develop that portfolio was to look at strengths that young people brought, because there's an assumption, especially when you work with kids for young people who are out of school or living in, in sort of the marginal communities is that they don't have any skills. It's just a problem of the burden in society. And so I can tell you an example of something we did, an exercise that we did. We asked these young people to take turns to go in front of the group and they had to identify the biggest challenge they had encountered in their lives so far and how they overcame it. And so one person that comes to my mind uh, was talking about the fact that when she became pregnant at 16, her mother kicked out of the house. And so what was she to do? And so in telling the story of how she was, you know, couch surfing for a while and ended up finally with one of her aunts living in a, 
a neighboring uh, community, um, she brought out all her problem-solving strength, you know. And, the, and what the other people had to do was to uh, write down what these strengths were that she was that she seemed to um, demonstrate in the course of solving her issue. And we did that for everybody, and that became the basis by which they were able to articulate some of the elements within their for their resumes, for example. So that's one thing that we did. Um, we can say that uh, the, the um, you know, they all, I mean, and the success rate was very high, and we were one of the five top programs in the country. The success rate was very high. We graduated 80% of those who came. One of the groups uh, put down the experience and it became the little handbook, the peanut butter and jelly guide to organizing a homework club. Um, four of them put this document together. I worked with them in some of the editing. And this, for a while, was a really big bestseller in the college simply because, you know, it's so thin, easy to read. And communities were very interested in, in, in getting that. Um, what else can I say about the project? And that basically is, is, um, is what we did for two cycles. Same kind of thing. I don't know if that was useful to you, but I certainly have got the book list that we put together and some of how the, the, uh, the national project itself saw the issue of literacy which may be relevant. The other thing that I did while I was here was we received a grant, I think, what, in 1999 to do some research, research directly with youth about obstacles to becoming, lit uh, to becoming literate in education. So in the Sime Wilner community, I, I went and interviewed a group of young people um, who were not in school. Um, some of them had some, you know, had uh, some contact with the criminal justice system. But I, uh, I used a method called oral testimony, where I tape recorded what they had to say, and out of what they asked them some questions, just uh, sort of uh, wrote, wrote down as much as possible verbatim what they said around various themes. And uh, there's nothing in here that I don't think you know. You know, but it's, uh, it's something that we did as well around, around my involvement with you. So, that's all I want to say. <laughs>